there during this time. All right. And with that, go ahead and take a deep breath. Find some sacred space wherever you are. <sighs> and let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Please join me in the call to worship that's found in our bulletins. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. And with that, I'd like to invite you to sing with me, Jesus Christ is risen today. loves us with an everlasting love. In faith and trust, we boldly confess our sin to God and before one another. Loving God, our mourning is deep and our joy too long absent. Our wilderness journey has been long and chaotic, punctuated with fear and marked by confusion. We confess that throughout this season of Lent and Holy Week, we have doubted your promises of peace and care. We capitulated to the evil all around us, unable to imagine that you could be doing a good new thing in the middle of suffering. Forgive us for dwelling in Holy Saturday when we should have run to the tomb to discover that Easter Sunday will not be stopped. Quell our fear, embolden our witness, show us the way to Galilee where the risen Christ will meet us. Friends, remember that Jesus told us on the third day he would be raised from the dead. Remember the words of forgiveness he spoke from the cross. Remember that he is word made flesh and that word is one of grace upon grace. Remember, know we are forgiven and be at peace. Let us pray. Lord, often we fail to recognize you because our expectations blind us to your near presence. Open our eyes, silence our fears, help us to see you in the word read and proclaimed, and then empower us to go and tell others the good news. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 118, verses 21 to 27. I thank you that you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. 
bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel story for this Easter Sunday is the resurrection story as it is told in the gospel of Mark. And church, if there is a resurrection story that seems fitting for the season that we ourselves are in right now, I do believe that it is this resurrection story from the Gospel of Mark. Mark's version of the resurrection story doesn't tie everything up in a pretty bow. The storyteller Mark unfolds this account of Jesus's life and death and then that life-changing news about Jesus's resurrection. And then we're left with some really big questions about what's gonna happen next. So let's go ahead and open up our Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, starting in verse one, to hear this good news that God has for us in the resurrection story. Our story and God's story continue with these words. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. For there you will see him, just as, you, as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is where the original ending of Mark leaves us. Since the time of the earliest readers, this incomplete ending has troubled us. And as a result, later authors added their own longer, happier endings. And yet it's generally believed that the Gospel of Mark leaves us here at verse 8. But they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Mark leaves us here at the end of his gospel with these traumatized friends who had gone through so much in such a short time. We are left here after hearing the good news of life after death and that promise that we would see the resurrected Jesus again. We are left here with these three disciples stumbling out of the tomb into the morning light, bewildered and trembling and not saying anything to anyone because they were afraid. And as we're left here with this seemingly unfinished ending to our own story, we can't help wonder, well, then what now? They must have told somebody. We have their story now. Who is going to spread the good news of the resurrected life? How will the good news get shared? Like I said, this resurrection story seems fitting for the season that we find ourselves in right now. We ourselves are in our, un, our own unfinished chapter of our story. We ourselves are living with fear and amazement and with all kinds of questions about what to do next. Over the past month with the spread of COVID-19, our expectations and our sense of what is normal have been turned upside down. We find ourselves in our own unpredictable time, needing to stay safe in the shelter of our own dwellings for the good of ourselves and for those who we care about. Amid our own hope and grief and trauma and concern, we are doing the best we can in our own situation to care for our neighbors nearby and around the world we're left wondering what comes next. 
I realize that it can seem a little strange to be celebrating resurrection today while we're still sheltering in place. And while we are still unable to meet together and celebrate together in the sanctuary. And I realize that we ourselves are stumbling out of our own tombs and trying to figure out how to live into the good news of resurrection while we are still feeling afraid of what might come. But thankfully, part of the good news in the Gospel of Mark is that feeling fear doesn't end our story as disciples. Feeling afraid is natural. It's wonderfully human. It's through leaning into our fears and persisting in loving God and loving our neighbors that we grow as followers of the risen Jesus. So considering our experience of struggle and grief and fear that we are experiencing right now, how can we live right now in a way that proclaims the resurrection in our own unfinished story? Well, friends, I am here to tell you that this resurrection life is already being practiced, not in spite of the situation that we're in, but as a faithful response to the world that we are in. Over the past few weeks, I've witnessed the resurrection hope be shared in small and big ways. I've seen this hope shared with hearts and rainbows taped into windows across the world and around our own town. Signs of care that are in many ways like the candles that were put in, in windows to show safe, signs of safety during the Underground Railroad. I've witnessed this resurrection hope over the past month as we have learned new rhythms of compassion and self-compassion. I've seen it through people discerning how they can care for the most vulnerable and through the global community sacrificing some of our own privileges and preferences in order to keep each other safe and supported. I've witnessed this resurrection hope as we have gained new insight about ourselves that kind of self-understanding that only comes from being in a strange new situation and with fewer distractions and more time in our thoughts. I've recognized this resurrected life as I've seen people slowing down and relearning new rhythms of grace for themselves and for others. I've witnessed how this situation has compelled our local church to reimagine what it means to be the church outside of the building and what it means to be in solidarity with the larger community in an evolving way. I've seen our church adapt to new ways of worshiping that we probably would not have thought about otherwise. I've witnessed resurrection as we relearn together what is necessary to worship God. It's not the pew we sit in or the lilies that we expect at Easter, but rather worship is the people of God pouring out our love for God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength in whatever way we're able. So church, take a moment, breathe in the spirit of God, and notice for yourself how you are witnessing God's great story of resurrection being proclaimed in word and deed in the world around us and consider how you can lean into your own fear and amazement in order to proclaim this resurrection hope through whatever comes. As our story with God continues into the weeks ahead and the time beyond that, may our beloved God continue to speak these words of life into our lives, even when we don't yet know what to do with them. May our beloved God help us to realize that our fear and confusion aren't obstacles to our faith, but elements of a faithful life. And may we practice in our own time and place to proclaim that resurrection hope that God is revealing in our own stories. May it be so. Amen. And with that, I'd like to invite you to join in singing In the Bulb There is a Flower.
Friends, please join me in our affirmation of faith, which is found in our bulletin. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to eternal life. Friends, God has held nothing back from us, not even God's own son. On this day of resurrection, when we celebrate that Christ is risen, we respond with joy, showing our gratitude for God's saving grace through the gifts of God's tithes and of our offerings. We may not be able to be together to pass the offering plate around this morning, but if you are able, know at the very end of this bulletin, you can find the church's address so you can share your offerings. And with that, let us come to the Lord's table. Go ahead and pull out whatever elements that you have to share as our bread and juice today. On this resurrection morning, amid all our questions and uncertainty, Jesus bids us to come and eat with him. On this resurrection morning, though we are holding both fear and amazement, Jesus bids us come and eat with him. On this resurrection morning, though we don't fully know what comes ahead, Jesus bids us to come and eat with him. So we get to gather now around this table, assured of a welcome by our risen Lord Jesus. Let us make space for others as Christ makes space for us. According to the Gospels, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from its fruit of this vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus, knowing that he was about to be betrayed and handed over to the authorities, shared a meal with his disciples. And before they headed into the approaching storm, scattering and deserting him, he gave them this memorial, which would bring them back together and speak to them of forgiveness and union with God and with one another. These symbols before us today speak to us of grace and of communion with God and with one another. And on this Easter day, this meal speaks to us too of the wonder of resurrection. Let us give thanks to God in prayer. Risen Lord Jesus, that night in the upper room, you looked at each of your friends with love and gave them and us this sacrament that speaks of your love for us just as we are. In our struggles, in our failings, in our weariness, no matter what you love us, no matter what you reach out to raise us up with you in resurrection, we give thanks for food that unites us with you and with one another, and food that restores our souls and nourishes our spirit. As we share this feast with you today, may we know the depth of healing, the depth of loving, and the depth of restoration that is possible in the new life that you offer. May we know your healing on us and on the world we serve. May we know your love flooding our souls with warmth and overflowing into the communities we serve. And may we know our faith restored in the potential of your resurrection to make a difference in our lives and in the lives of all your children throughout the world. We remember those who live in fear, those who live without hope, and those who live without love. As we meditate on your resurrection, stir our souls in this place today, surrounded by your spirit and the spirits of all the saints who have gone before us. May we be renewed in purpose 
taking the power and the energy of your love into all the world, knowing that your love changes everything. God, breathe your resurrection spirit into this bread and this juice, wherever they might be. That as we share in this meal, we may know your risen power infusing all we do and all that we share together, enabling us to go and breathe new life into the world. We pray all of this in the name of our friend and savior, Jesus the Christ. And we join our voices together from wherever we are to pray the words he taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, looking into the eyes of those who he loved, took bread, and he broke it, and he said to them, this is my body, broken for you. Do this and remember me. In the same way, he took the cup, and he spoke of forgiveness and of drinking the cup in the new kingdom. And he said, drink from it, all of you. In this bread and in this juice, our risen Lord offers us new life today, and we do this to remember him. Friends, this is not a Presbyterian table. This is not our congregation's table. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who seek to trust in him to share in this meal that he has provided. So from wherever you are, let us join in this shared feast. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened the hearts and you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell this good news to the whole world. The Lord is risen indeed. Amen. And now let us join in singing our final hymn, Christ is Alive, which is found in our bulletins. Church, go and tell what you have seen and know. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.